Meth, baby! Woo! We're gonna get some meth today, y'all. We're gonna smoke it. We're gonna snort it. I don't even know. What do you do with meth? You smoke it? Do you snort it? We ain't gonna do either of those, folks. That'd be crazy. That's not what this show's about. This show ain't about snorting or smoking meth. No, no, no. This show is about buying a house where they had a meth lab in there. Would you do it? How about buying a house? You might be thinking like, hey, man, whatever. Yeah, sure. If the price is right, if the price is right, I'll buy me a meth house. How about $575,000? Would you pay $575,000 for a former meth house, man, a meth lab? Would you do it? It's not a fancy meth lab either. This ain't like no Gus Fring, Walter White action. No, no, this, this meth house looks like a piece of junk. Is some hillbilly meth, man. But $575,000. That's what a recent uh, meth house just went for. And I want to talk to you guys about whether or not that's actually a good investment. We're going to go in the ins and the outs of this thing. Talk about meth. Talk about meth. Re re I can't even speak. I'm so excited about talking about this meth opportunity. We're going to be talking about meth labs. We're going to be talking about meth remediation. We're going to be talking about real estate investing. The whole shebang. Let's get methed up right now. <laughs> Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise, and today we are talking meth, baby. We are talking meth houses, right? This thing, this story, right? It's a uh, in the Salt Lake City, Utah area, okay, this house, uh, meth-contaminated house, goes for $575,000 in hot housing market. And, th like, this, like, story is, like, gone uh, viral, right? Like, people are like, what? Somebody bought a meth house for $575,000? People are, like, losing their brains, man. And here's the thing. A meth house is a problem, right? But guess what, guys? We are real estate investors. How do you think we make money, folks? Regular people, regular Joe Schmoes, they have problems involving real estate. And then people like me, people like you, we slide in, right? We slide in. Not sliding into girls' DMs on IG. No, no, no. We slide into these real estate deals and we solve problems, and that's how we get paid, okay? And I think most of us would acknowledge some dude running a meth lab out of your house is a problem, and that's what's happening here, right? So some real estate investor come in, solve that problem for 575 right? This is the house. It looks like shit, right? It's a pretty shitty house, okay? It's like a little 3-1, little ranch, right? 1,468 square feet. Wrote that down because I give you guys the dates, baby. I give you guys the dates. Just this little fucking shitty-ass little uh, shit box meth lab, okay? Like I said, ain't no Walter White up in this B, okay? But it's all about location, location, location. You see that there? Them some big old mountains, right? Salt Lake City area called the uh, Wasatch Mountains. Now, I am not from Salt Lake City area, okay? Don't know much about it, but from what I understand, my limited amount of research into this meth house, uh, them them's some nice mountains. People wants to live in them mountains, okay? People like being in there. Now, it all comes down to the numbers, right? Does it make sense to buy this problem for 575 or not? Well, to figure that out, we need to know essentially two main things. Number one, what is the ARV? What's the property going to sell like when it's not a fucking meth lab? Number one. Number two, how much is it going to get from meth lab to not a fucking meth lab? What's the situation there? What's the problem? What's the process? How do I go from motherfucking meth lab to sweet move-in house that's not going to poison the new buyer and seller and their lovely little children, right? Their 2.5 children and their labradoodle, right? How do we get to that point? Well, to get to that point, you need to do meth remediation. I, myself, am not exactly an expert in meth remediation. Now, 
If you watch one of my other shows, The Tenants from Hell Show, I got a lot of jacked up stuff on that particular show, right? I've done it all. I got a $75 million real estate portfolio we manage out here in Ohio, and I got to tell you, we deal with all kinds of jacked up stuff. You don't believe me? Please watch all of those episodes, and you will see. It's freaking messed up, dude. We just, we, it's messed up, okay? The real estate investment space, it's a dirty game, y'all. But what I have never actually experienced yet in my life, knock on wood, can't wait for it to happen. I know it will eventually, and I'm ready for it. Uh, but I have not actually ever had a meth house in my portfolio, although... You know who has had a meth house in his portfolio? My buddy Brandon uh, from the YouTube channel Investment Joy. As a matter of fact, Brandon stopped in one day and we did an interview. We sat, well, he didn't stop in. It was like a Zoom interview, right? So, uh, you know, we sat down together, but, you know, via the Zoomer, bro, uh, we talked about one of his meth houses, right? Because he actually did have a house. Uh, that he had to do some meth lab remediation, and he had to take care of it. So I tell you what, why don't you uh, hear it from an actual expert who's actually gone through the process right now. Starts off, uh, I'm thinking 2014, my brother, he has um, a guy start to help him out at my brother's warehouse, doing repair, putting up some framing inside the warehouse. The guy is part of a local church recovery program, He's been in the re recovery program, I'm guessing, between six and nine months. They were homeless. Um, I wasn't aware that there was a drug issue, uh, but um, but there was one. <laughs> and I was kept in the dark of that. And they said, look, this guy has a kind of if iffy past. You know, we want you to look past it. He and his wife and his kids have been doing real well the past six, nine months-ish. Um, they're doing well, but they need a place of their own to really flourish. He's been working for your brother. I th and this was 2015, so 2014, late 2014, early 2015. I said, all right, you know, I'm willing to consider this. Um, let's do it. And, you know, this was after I'd been a, only a full-time landlord for a couple of years. I thought, ah, you know, I'm doing pretty well in my rental business. So I'll, I'll, I'll give these guys a chance. Uh, they moved into one very nice three-bed, one-bath. A downtown, gorgeous, turn of the century place, one of my most favorite properties. They move in, and you know, the problems start almost immediately. Um, different landlords, they have different processes and systems they set up. And at that time, I was not very good on my what does it put as a landlord? How do you uh, get your tenants to sign up for utilities? As it is now, you don't get the keys till you give me confirmation codes. And this deal is one of the reasons why. Um, so I had electric, water, trash, um, gas all in my name. Um, month later, I get a nice fat bill in the mail um, for that tenant for, I don't know how much in electricity. Um, and I go to the tenant, I say, hey, you need to get this, you, these uh, utilities switched into your name. Oh, I'm sorry, Brandon, we'll get them switched. Um, go back, month number two. Hey, um, you're paying your rent, which I appreciate, but um, here now we're up to $500 in just electric bills. Um, this all, is, all in one month? Uh, this is now month number two. Okay, so he didn't pay month one and this one, got it. So 250 a month, which is still a lot of money. I call a local um, attorney saying, hey, I, I need to get, what do I do here? They're paying rent, but they're not paying their electric bill. I, I got to terminate it. And the, I got wonderful advice from this attorney. And she said, well, Brandon, that's considered a self-help eviction and you can't do anything about it. You just have to keep the electric in your name, <laughs> which <laughs> I was like, oh, this isn't good. And then month number three or month number four, I say, you know, I'm going to have to, they stop paying their rent now. Um, and I'm getting complaints from neighbors. Neighbors are actually tracking down my personal phone number and the property's in an LLC. So they actually did their homework. Um, they did their homework to find my name and number knowing that I am got, got the property in an LLC. And they called me and they say, hey, Brandon, we're pretty sure that these people are also selling drugs out of your place. So um, I actually have a sit down meeting with the tenants and say, hey, look, you're stiffing me on utilities. This is month number four. You're, you've stiffed me on utilities for about $2,000. Um, we're at the four, fourth month. You haven't paid your rent. The rent was only six, $600 a month for a gorgeous three bed, one bath. 
And I said, hey, look, you're stiffing me on rent now. I'm in the hole two grand on all these utilities. And they say, and I said, you, you, my, people are calling me and saying that there are people going inside your house possibly selling drugs. And the guy stands up and is like, well, what do you, what, who are you to tell me what I can and can't do with my house? And I said, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's not your house because you, you're not even paying your rent. And I said, the people that I hear that are in or out of your house are dealers. And I said, this is a bad situation. You've got a child here that's involved. You've got a wife that's involved. I'm trying to be the really nice guy here. And, the, you know, he goes up and he says, here, I, I, you know, I was in drug recovery for a year. You don't need to be worrying about this. I'm just trying to help people. People helped me get clean, and now I'm helping people get clean, and you're a monster, Brandon. I'm like, oh, gosh, you know. So I go through, I, um, this is month number four, month number five, um, or month number four, I file for eviction. Um, down here, you guys are, are a, a bit up north for me. Down here, uh, it takes about three weeks to get your court case um, scheduled. Um, you win the court case, then it's another 10-ish days for the set out. So it's about a month afterward. I'm at five months now. Um, no utilities paid back to me. Um, I'm now at two months-ish of lost rent. The um, We go in with the bailiff. Uh, we win the court case. They never show up to the court. Uh, for the municipal they, they never here. do they very rarely ever show up oh but it depends on how many tenant tenant hell stories you want i got one guy that brought 13 people as witnesses against me in one one other court case well i think so. we're gonna have to get into that one after this okay, one we can get that one later i just i just posted a video kind of about that on youtube and um uh, if we'll go into that later if you want to because i've had a lot of people ask me to break that eviction down so sure, absolutely bring them on so, okay so with um, this deal um, I win the case. They never show up to court. The bailiff, this is probably my second or third eviction ever. I show up and the bailiff, really, really nice older gentleman. He's been doing evictions for 30 years down here. He is so freaking cool. And I don't know if you've ever had time to s spend time with like a bailiff that all they do is evictions. They are so amazing to talk to. They've got, they've got more stories than I do. But um, so I'm sitting there talking to this bailiff and he's got this weird look on his face. I said, something's wrong isn't it and he says something is very wrong and i said what's going on and they said well your your tenants are over here and he said we've got a car load of people over here trying to get in your property and i said huh i but like oh. you know what's that supposed to mean i don't know what are you talking about what's what's going on here and he, he gets on his phone and he says i need backup I need some more police here, maybe the fire department. And I'm sitting there thinking, what on earth's going out? And he says, Brandon, you stand right over here and prevent entry from your to the property. And so I'm okay, whatever, you know. <laughs> I'm along for the ride. Are, are you and armed at this point? Do you have a gun I, on you? I, I can't remember if I have my Glock on me or not. Okay. I probably did. Um, so I um so I'm standing there and there's a uh, big fellow. <laughs> in a car and he's sitting there going and this bailiff walks inside then he pulls out he, he's in the back of the place he pulls out and everybody's gone and then the bailiff comes down and holding a backpack and it was like a little my little pony backpack and i'm like okay he's like found it and i said well what do you mean he said i found it i said i'm an idiot i don't know what you're talking about what did you find he said meth lab i huh and he's, he's showing me this mobile pony. He pulls it open, and it's full of Coleman lanterns, fuel, a bunch of cell phone batteries, pipe cutters, the stuff. And I said, oh, he said, this is mobile meth lab, Brandon. The police and the fire department are on their way. So I've got pictures of when the police rolled up on my Instagram. This is from 015. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be a real fun thing. The police come, and they have this whole deal because we are one of the very few municipalities within the state of Ohio that um, requires an actual inspection. Um, I inspection if you have a suspected meth lab. Um, you you guys are in Cleveland? Yeah, and um, to be honest with you, we've, we've been through everything under the sun except for a meth lab, which is why I really wanted to, to hear your story on this because that so, is the one uh, 
you know, people blowing their brains out, killing each other, you know, all that jazz. We've had it all, but never a meth yeah. lab. So I would love to hear yeah. exactly what so, you do afterwards. There's a municipality in Cuyahoga County, and then there's four or five other cities in the United States that essentially have this deal where you have to have a EPA certified meth lab inspection or meth remediation inspection. And you get on EPA's website, that isn't a thing. Um, so I had to go call the city inspector a couple different places. We go through and I call all these people. I get a different attorney to help me and say, hey, look, what am I supposed to do here? And they took me aside and they said, really, Brandon, no one knows what you to do because you're the only landlord in the entire county that has actually called the building department about a meth lab. And they said, yeah, it happens, but no one's ever really actually called to ask what to do. So they're looking through the city books and the laws and all this, just all this insane stuff. And they say, hey, look, um, we think that you're supposed to call a certified company for meth lab remediation and have them inspect the place. And I say, well, that isn't a thing. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's not an EPA certificate for meth lab remediation. Um, I said, but I can call an environmental specialist. Yeah, yeah, Brandon, that, that, that's what we need. And so, you know, I'm thinking, I'm really having, I'm really getting my guts busted out on me because I'm trying to do the right thing. And so long story short, I find a guy and he does uh, swabs. And the deal was you swab each room in four different positions, floors, two walls, or any accessories like a furnace or whatever, and then the ceiling. And two rooms in the house come back for uh, methamphetamine residue and some of the precursor chemicals that are potentially utilized within with meth production. Um, one's a bedroom and the numbers are like really low, but it's right above the uh, whatever they have defined as the limit or the thing for uh, meth. Then in the kitchen, it comes back really high. And one of the places they tested was the sink. The sink comes back hot for meth. So um, was it three weeks and $6,000 later, I have a clean bill of health from this place. The health department is treating me nice now. Well, can, goes, can you, uh, hold on real quick. I don't want to jump that far ahead. Okay. How did you get the clean bill of health? Exactly what okay. did you have to do? I found that there is a place um, that they there's their meth remediation specialists and one of them is i want to say it's surf pro they've actually got this meth lab package and it's 25k and i called him i said this does not make sense whatsoever um and then i called this other guy who incidentally he's a real nice guy but he's also the guy that helped the city write the um meth lab ordinance so if you get my drift, it's, here's the guy that wrote the law. <laughs> and I asked him, I said, what is it? And he said, it's going to be sixth grade, Brandon. I said, that's just what it is? And he said, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Um, so they go in and they they swab. Um, they go in, they swab the walls. They get these essentially kits off Amazon.com. They send them into a lab like in Oregon. And I want to say there's only two or three places in the U.S. that will test for those chemicals. And then they test the um, percentage or the parts per million that come back in that swab. They have a chain of custody. They have to sign or whatever, showing that no one else handled the meth swab and stuff like that. Then when they um, go in and test the amounts, they figure out how much, what, do, what needs to be done. And in this case, everything in the house was in the range to where you can fix it. It can be fixed. You don't have to tear the house down or tear, cut in the drywall or whatever. It can be washed down. And essentially, like with meth, you have a group of bases and a group of acids. And they, there's this calculation or something they do, and they essentially wash the walls down with this really nasty stuff. And they just continuously wash the walls down. They vacuum it up. They have a HEPA, uh, giant air handler HEPA filter type deal pulling all the air out of the house constantly, pulling new air in. They have the um, Breaking Bad style Tyvek suits with respirators and all this stuff. 
and they essentially swab the place down to where any of the substance is neutralized and the walls, floors. It was really clean. That was nice after it's all said and done. So they just essentially mopped it down with these chemicals for a day straight. And then um, they did that in the upstairs bedroom too, where they also found the lower elevated, but still beyond the um, requirement for meth remediation of this local municipality. And um, I got a giant bill in the mail had a nice letter from the city saying you're clean now you we approve you that you can rent this place out again they gave me their clean bill of how health after spending all this money on it not from my understanding not every municipality like if this house was five miles in any direction um, I would not have been liable for anything as far as meth lab remediation goes um, essentially could have done it myself with stuff off Amazon um, but with the way they wrote the law, I did not want to get in trouble with it. And now there's other meth labs to where you go in the full chemical glass set, beakers everywhere. But essentially, this was close to like a shake and bake lab. Essentially, no glassware involved. It was a backpack full of stuff um, that most people could probably get from Walmart and a hardware store and a couple places like that. Very, very flammable. And I'm glad the house didn't burn down. So that's cool. But you know, it was a very, very expensive thing. Long story short, I asked the police, please, please do something about this guy. He has a little kid living in this, you know, a little nine-year-old girl, and they're cooking meth in the kitchen. And CPS does nothing. The, the, the wife says she's going to leave the husband. She does for, I think, a full three months. They get back together. He's arrested two more times for drugs. Um, I've mentioned in a couple of my YouTube videos, I actually own a newspaper, um, a, a digital media firm here in Central Southern Ohio. We actually, um, FOIA, uh, Freedom of Information Act, a um, officer cams from a recent arrest involving this guy. He got tasered. Uh, <laughs> they put more meth on him. And then, um, uh, I don't know if you guys up there get uh, state AG uh, attorney general news but there was this big attorney general deal you know operation blah 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 catches 50 drug dealers in central southern Ohio and this guy was up near the top echelon of drug dealing in central and southern Ohio and he will likely never see the light of day and this is something that happened I want to say two or three weeks ago and you know we are now for over four, almost five years. This was, Jan I think this whole thing culminated uh, January 2015 with me as far as the meth lab eviction bailiff deal. And this guy two or three weeks ago got busted by the state attorney general, Ohio State Patrol, multiple sheriff's departments, undercover informants, and just on and on and on and on. It's insane. Well, I got to... <clears throat> That's that's a lot to digest. <laughs> All right. I got a few a few questions. I was just trying to jot some of them down. Um, the the first question is: You said you're about five years removed from it. Uh, yes. Do you have any? Because again, I've never been through a meth lab. Do you have any uh, disclosure requirements? Do you have to disclose to every single tenant going forward, like since but, then, that it was at one see, point a meth lab? The the local municipality um, they say. To do it they say you need to offer disclosures well the immediate question that i have is which disclosure do i offer because you know with lead-based paint we have a federal lead we have a federal disclosure form that we have and we make them sign off on it yeah. i've also got a uh it's not an e maybe it's an epa deal but i've also got a radon disclosure i have people sign when they move into a place so i went to the local municipality who sets that mandate for the meth lab and i say what kind of disclosure do you need and they say oh well you know you need the disclosure what kind of disclosure? So I've asked the local municipality what disclosure is that, and they can't answer me. So I say, well, then I'm going to make my own form. Well, no, it needs to be official. <laughs> like, well, is it uh, Southern, Central Southern Ohio official? Do you want my attorney to charge me two fifty an hour to come up with a disclosure? What kind do you do? So we've kind of come up with our own internal disclosure that says, hey, we had um, <coughs> a meth lab here. We had uh, a company come. They've cleaned it up everything from what we can tell is a clean bill of health here's the clean bill of health so that's kind of what we've done but you know it's always funny with these kinds of local municipality requirements they tell you this is what the law says this is what you need to go do 
And then they point at a vague wall that uh, no one has a clue on, which is just, I mean, it, it makes me mad as an investor because I spend, I spend more time and effort trying to find the law and figure out what I'm supposed to do than I actually spend fixing the problem and trying to figure it out. So no, I, I hear you on that one. Have you gotten like, you know, over the last five years, I'm sure you put a few different tenants in there. Have you gotten like a lot of tenants that were still nervous about it, even though you showed them that you have a the clean first, bill of health? The first one was because she worked right next door and uh, saw the, the multiple, multiple police show up. She thought she was worried somebody got murdered there. I said, no, 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 no sweetie. There's no, no one got murdered here. It's just a meth lab. <laughs> <laughs> just I, arguably, I think the meth lab might be a lot worse than the murder. That's that's the other question I had for you. Yours wasn't bad enough to where they had to start cutting out the walls or tearing the house down. I presume yeah. when you were going through this, you got a pretty good education on that process. If oh, it would have been, if it would have been worse, like what are the? I assume there's more or less like three levels to this, right? There's your level where you can just clean it. I assume yeah. the level after that is you got to cut out the drywall, replace yes. the drywall. And then the worst, the most extreme case would be tearing the house down. Can you yeah. kind of walk us through the, the next couple levels? All right. So, again, it comes down to the ARV, right? Is it going to make some sense, right? Is there going to be a pot of gold at the end of the meth tunnel, right? And the remediation, right? So, 575, okay? If the properties next to these Wasatch Mountains that are not methed up to all hell are selling for five fifty, and you bought a meth lab for five seventy five, you're really bad at real estate. You should stop doing real estate. It is actually very hard uh, to screw up real estate that bad. You'd you'd be like the worst real estate investor ever, right? So don't uh, don't make that mistake. But if the ARVs are higher, right? You might be doing pretty good. So what we have here is an $805,000 valuation, right? This is what similar homes in the Salt Lake City area by them beautiful mountains are going to go for, right? So 575 is what this anonymous buyer has paid or is paying, I believe, as I understand it. Uh, the property is like still in escrow or something, and, uh, you know, Somehow the news got a hold of it and popped off. Weird thing, I was reading one of the articles, which, by the way, I linked the article. Uh, I got those photos from in the notes below in case you guys want to actually read the entire article. But I thought it was weird. Uh, the real estate agent, the listing agent, uh, was interviewed by uh, the news, and he didn't want to be named or cited or anything. Bro, what are you doing, man? It's real estate. Marketing is like 101, dog. You, you should have put your name on that shit. Hey, guys. I could sell any house. Don't believe me? I got somebody more than half a million dollars for a fucking meth lab. That's, that's what you should be doing, bro. That's what you could be saying. I'm Billy Bob Realtor. I could sell anything, even a fucking meth lab, for half a milli. Dude, that's a great tagline. If I had a regular house, I'd be like, well, damn. Billy over there got Susie and Chuck half a fucking million for a meth lab. He could sell the fuck out of our house. That's what I would be thinking. Come on, bro. Marketing opportunity missed. But anywho, you know who's not going to miss opportunities? Real estate investors who know the ARV, who know the meth lab remediation cost, and who are not scared of solving incredibly dangerous, horrible, uncomfortable problems. Okay, so this area, our house. Some cat, probably going to fit that bill. They're paying five seventy-five dollars for a meth lab house. In an area where the other houses are normally going to be eight oh five, so what is that? Six seventy five, seven seventy five. So that's two hundred thirty thousand. We have a two hundred thirty thousand dollars spread. So I guess the the question is, right? How much does it cost to remediate meth labs? Right? How much do we got to do? Now I don't have any photos of the inside of the house. I don't know exactly what it looks like because you would obviously have to do like a regular renovation too, right? Uh, but you could definitely renovate a little 3 one 1400 something square foot house for a fucking hell of a lot less than $230,000, right? Let's call it 100 And that's an insanely expensive. That is an insanely expensive renovation, right? But for some reason, we're going to say you put a friggin' 100 in it. Because, I mean, dude, there's a meth lab in there. So, like, 
I'm guessing it's not very nice inside, and it looked pretty shitty outside. So, like, usually people running meth labs don't really keep up their houses very well. So, 575 to 805, we're working with a $230,000 spread. Let's just assume that this person, outside of the meth remediation, which I'll get into, is doing a $100,000 reno. They're probably not, but let's just say it's 100 because it's a nice round number, and, like, I see no scenario where it's more than 100, right? So that leaves us with a $130,000 spread, right? So now with our $130,000 spread, all we got to do is get the meth remediation to come in under 130 k and it's probably a sweet deal. Pow! What do you know, folks? Apparently, according to the article, uh, the cost of the meth remediation of that house is only going to be about 4500 bucks, right? So for those of you doing the math at home, you're looking at, oh, what is that, like 125 and a half, right? 125500 spread, assuming they did another 100000 on top of this low meth remediation. You see, believe it or not, folks, uh, meth remediations, they can be really horrible. They can. They can be real bad, right? But sometimes they're actually not that bad, and it's actually uh, a lot of bugaboo about not much, right? It's actually not as bad as you would think, right? A minor amount of meth contamination uh, is fairly cheap to fix, right? So as long as you don't got, like, uh, I don't know, like Chernobyl amount levels of uh, meth, right? Maybe you're just dealing with a little three-mile island amount of meth. Apparently, it's not that big a deal, right? So uh, for those of you at home thinking, how can I get out there and make money in real estate? Well, you got to solve the difficult problems, folks. And meth is one of those problems that scares a lot of people. But as you can see uh, from the numbers, it's actually, if you get the right deal, an opportunity for you, right? You do two things. One, you put a bunch of money in your pocket. Two, you make a community a better place. Isn't that what it's all about, man? Think of all the kids. No more meth on that street. How lovey and happy is that? Boom, 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 pow. And that's what we do here, folks. That's what we do on Holton Wise TV. We talk about real estate. We answer your real estate questions. So if you're one of the many out there who wanted to know, if you should get into the business of buying meth labs, the answer is possibly yes, probably. If the numbers work right, yeah, you probably should. You guys got other questions? Drop them in the comments. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.